Would you check this out? Hello there, this is me, this is me. Ah, uh, I am so excited today to share something with you guys. Check this out, this is the Sid FX version 3. We're gonna take a look at this device and I'm gonna talk you through the process and really, really give you some information about what this is all about, except that you probably have been guessing at something that has to do with the Sid chip. The sound interface device. Alright, let's dive into it. Let's open this package up and see what it contains or what's inside the fancy box, so to speak. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna talk you through this process, so to speak. There are several of um, versions you can get. There's the 3 and the 5 that I'm aware of. First, when we are unboxing it, you have the actual device wrapped in some good bubble plastic things and you have it in an anti-static bag and you have this rat nest of cables and you have a little lovely device or not and some kind of instructions all right and um, the first thing is to open this one up and i'm gonna make sure that i am as static as possible yeah if you know what i mean always handle this with care and when i am opening this one up this is exactly what it is meant to be doing uh, mine is prepared. Haha, <laughs> that's something you can get sometimes. Um, so, now you probably know, know what this is. Back in the days when the Commodore 64 came out, you wouldn't have to wonder or worry about how it would sound because it was equipped with the very same SID chip model only and that was a 6581. However, this was about to be changed when Commodore decided to come out with a new model of the Commodore 64 that was also equipped with a new SID model known as the 8580 SID model. Uh, some gamers, they were complaining about that now you couldn't hear samples in your gaming center longer. And that had to do with the Commodore making a new design in the 8580 SID model. There we go, I'm going to try and do my magic and zoom in here a little little bit okay what this device allows you to do is to have multiple SID chips connected into one SID socket at the same time in my case I have choose to have like an 8580 R5 and 6581 chip um, and that has to do with two Two things actually. This uh, is a very very good model of the 8580s, uh, the newer SID chip so to speak. And this one comes from one of my recording test machines and this one is very good for like two speeds, four speeds uh, because the 87 model has a very very high, or how shall, how to say it, it has a very nice filter curve and the resonance is a bit higher so you get the more clear sound from this particular chip and I have been going through like 10 different chips to come to the conclusion that this, this one is the best actually and the 6581R4AR uh, from 86 this model is also measured by me and I have done well, I have done so many test runs on this chip and it works with the more or less most of the famous composers like JT TF BD Hmm, that is kind of nice. And we also have some newer composers that this specific chip runs very well with. And these are J, G, 
generic L D I'm going to reveal what this is all about all right like I said this particular chip here the 6581 it runs very well with uh, Martin Galloway's uh, songs Jaron Tell's songs Ben Daglish and Tim Follin these are kind of my uh, sort of references oh 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 we also have another one here in the MG uh, it's actually Matt Gray and Martin Walker so we should have one more MV actually and uh, above here I pointed out a G oh here we also have no no sorry here we have like the G and this one stands for Jeff He's a very famous composer for using the rough filters and he can really make crisp songs and sounds. This one is Laxity, and this one is Drax and this is Generic. I think I spent like this many days. Measuring to get to this specific model, this unique SID chip. And so I spent 280 days to come up with this particular SID chip. It sounds pretty generic, okay? What kind of filters, capacitors, uh, what kind of CIA chips, you know? I really dived into to really get as much information as possible. And if we are looking at the 8580 model, it's not so much to say about this chip because it's the newer model, the newer revision. And this one is, like I said, it has the best filter curves for the cutoff and the resonance and it gives a clear sound. <clears throat> because I have another one from 89 and that had a little more damped sound, so to speak. Uh, the filter was less open, so it has a more like muffled, not muffled in a bad way, but the filter did not open up as much as on this one and that chip is better for two SIDs when you are using two of these you can also pair two 8580 chips into this one and the 89 model uh, I have two of them so they can pair up in another uh, in another SID FX but now we are going to consider something else So let's install this. As you can see here, I have chosen an old model of the Commodore 64, which has or had actually a 6581R4AR SID chip model. And if we are uh, just going through a little bit here, what's inside? And um, this is a this is like. Um, this is not a short board and this is also something you have to kind of you know keep in mind when you are installing this so uh, here is where the SID ship was originally placed but uh, ah, yeah like I said I I have prepared this one so I have actually ripped it out and uh, inserted this into this socket so when installing this you have to keep in mind a, a few things one thing is make sure that these, you, know, you see these little um, gravings like markets, these has to be up, you know. If you're doing it the other way, 
well, try and let me know, but I wouldn't advise it because you will break the SID chip and the device or both of them. And when you are installing this one, it's the same thing here. You need to look in your SID chip socket for a little, like, dent little mark saying that, hey, this is how it should be connected. And this one, I just connect here. It's so easy. Just inserting it. There we are. Almost. Now it's the fun part. And the fun part is to uh, open up this lovely plastic bag here. And uh, get out this little, this little... This little rat nest of cables. Now it's not that complicated. It's actually very, very easy. You just plug it in here in the bus, and from the bus you have to... Everything is actually explained on their web page, I think. They have like a manual out there, but it's okay. This yellow one is going up here. Boom, there we go. And the other ones are going on the, on the actual CPU. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. When installing the SIDFX, there are really no big problems at all. What you need to keep in mind is this cable with those little grabbers, so to speak. This one you will connect to what is called the SIDFX bus. And that bus is actually the fourth one from the left. That one. And there's no way that you can insert this the wrong way, as you see here. Uh -uh, it won't fit, so you just turn it the right way and insert it. The yellow grabber, also known as the I01 signal cable, is a going to is going to be attached on the seventh on that port on the I/O port. So we just connect it to the seventh pin there, counting from left. So this one is the first, like so. So that is working. That is all right. As it goes for the blue grabber, the A5 signal, it's going after CPU's pin 12, ISA marked as 65 town 8500 or 8502. And the last one, the green grabber A5 signal, will connect at the pin 15 on your CPU, so to say. So now that everything is in control, just make one last little checkup and you should be able to continue to the second part. Some people, including me, were a bit afraid. Will those grabbers hold or will they rattle around like a little snake in the machine and shorten things out? Well, to be on the sure side and ensure myself, I decided to put some hot glue at the connectors to keep them in place. There we go. Everything is connected and it's looking amazingly. I was a bit clever because I didn't want to drill holes into my case here. So I just put this pole cable nest out through that little RF thingy there. And the next is up to you. Welcome back. Would you listen to this? It means that uh, everything is working. Um, at the moment you are listening at this wonderful song by Cosmo of Bliss. Uh, at the moment it is playing in um, 8580 mode using the new set, but with just a little click like this. Can you hear it? I can do it again. Listen. Now it's playing with the 6581 chip. You can... I can hear it because, yeah, I know the difference. It has a bit sharper sounds, this. But if you listen now to the lead that should come in pretty soon, you will hear a dramatic change here, actually. That's why I choose this tune, because it has the filter specifically made for the 8580. Here it sounds really muffled, but now, now we have the full capacity of it. So, 
This is wonderful. I'm just gonna shut the music for a little while. So you can hear what I'm saying without over dubbing too much. Like I said, um, this has been a fantastic journey and I am pretty pleased about the audio actually. I can hear some artifacts like the Vic chip is making some noises but I will adjust that later because I just wanted to give you like a true installation guide what you can expect and the sound quality is astonished so far I can say. For a normal listener it's very 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 good. Like I said the installation was fast easy smooth for me even if I did some other stuff too, uh, you, you know how it goes. You, there's always something extra. And I hope that this has been very useful for you guys. And I hope that you will like and share this video. Please do that. It means a lot to me. And if you are really, really sweet, you can also support my Patreon. Link will show up. And uh, the Patreon will make it possible for me to take my videos to one step further and it will make make it for me possible to record even finer quality if even more SIDS and do more research and also do other hardware overviews and do some crazy things but without you guys it's really hard because like I said I'm doing this on my free time and it eats a lot of my family time and just to make this video that you are watching now, it took me six and a half hours and filming it took 10 hours. So keep that into consideration the next time you support my Patreon. And I will love you to death and back to the sky if you do that. So please have a very, very nice day and I hope to see you soon, guys. Bye.